Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, and I guess Merry Christmas Eve. Thank you yeah. so much for starting your morning with us. So much to talk about. Before we get to that, we want to talk about 10 of the most read stories on KSAT.com. Throughout the year, we know the year is not over, but it is coming to a close. Exactly, but there are a lot of topics that were discussed. One of them being, let's bring you to mm -hmm. Jordan or Brandon Jordan. Now, this was the YouTuber who got the city's blessing to dive along the San Antonio Riverwalk after police first stopped him in the beginning. Um, now, of course, Brandon was looking for treasures mm -hmm. from the San Antonio River legally, but again, he got stopped by police in attempting it uh, in the 2020. But he's just an outdoorsman who attracted a lot of YouTube following uh, nearly 3 million subscribers. And he dives, or his dives into the San Antonio Antonio River were so successful he created two videos about his adventure. So I thought that was a pretty cool deal. I know he picked up, you know, grabbed a lot of stuff mm -hmm. out of the river. <laughs> he was a brave man. <laughs> so, so he got a bunch of Mardi Gras beads mm -hmm. and uh, he actually did eventually get legal permission from the city. Exactly. I think he has two videos that you can actually check out right now, KSAT.com. But that is not all. Like we said, the top 10 of 2021. Uh, next up, the nine laws that took effect in this uh, September 1st in Texas. You know, it was a long year year, a long year at the state legislature. So obviously that one, a lot of stuff related to the, uh, the winter storms, which was crazy. Oh yeah. And then, uh, especially, I mean, number eight on the list, ERCOT, when they initiated the rolling outages during that winter storm, you know, we both covered it extensively and it right. was, you know, February was a crazy time here it in San Antonio. It was frustrating. I was on the far West side and I was like, okay, I'm going to get my 15 minutes or so. And it, it was like maybe one minute of light. And then next thing you know, darkness for like days. So yeah. that was stressful. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So this full list, KSAT.com. But for now, here's today's 9 at 9. It is now day five in the search for three-year-old Lena Keel. The reward for finding the young girl up to $150,000. Of that, Crime Stoppers of San Antonio offering a $50,000 reward for any information that can lead to an arrest. Lena was last seen on Monday at the Via del Cabo apartment complex on Fredericksburg Road. She was last seen wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes. A Bear County sergeant is being dishonorably discharged for allegedly acting inappropriately during a sting operation. A case at 12 Defenders reporting says Anthony Daggett is retiring in lieu of termination this week. The 22-year veteran was placed on administrative leave on Monday. Two sources familiar with the investigation say Daggett is accused of tipping off the owner of a massage parlor involved in the sting operation. Former Minnesota police officer Kimberly Potter spending Christmas in custody. The 26-year-old police veteran found guilty after she said she mistook her gun for a taser. This all happened during a traffic stop when she shot and killed 20-year-old Dante Wright. In Los Angeles, police shooting and killing a 14-year-old girl. Authorities say that she was in a North Hollywood clothing store dressing room when officers fired on an assault suspect and a bullet went through the wall and hit the girl. Witnesses say the suspect allegedly attacked a woman with a bike chain lock. Police say the girl was discovered after the suspect was shot and killed. Another woman accusing Chris Noth of sexual misconduct. A singer-songwriter says she was sexually victimized by the Sex and the City actor back in 2002. She alleges that Noth forcibly kissed her, touched her inappropriately, then threatened to blacklist her from the business she ever told anyone. Noth denied previous allegations against him, but he has yet to comment on this one. Two major U.S. airlines have proactively canceled some Christmas Eve flights due to the Omicron variant. As of last night, United Airlines canceled 112 flights and Delta Airlines canceled around 90 flights. Delta says the flight cancellations are due to a combination of issues, including potential inclement weather in some areas and the impact of the Omicron variant. Severe weather making for hazardous driving conditions in parts of the country. In Wisconsin, icy conditions causing multiple crashes involving about 40 vehicles, including tractor trailers. Meanwhile, heavy rains flooding a California overpass, killing at least two people. The number of COVID-19 cases in Bear County are on the rise. There are 376 new cases. That's up more than 200 since the previous report. That brings the seven day moving average to 319. Four people have also died from the virus. Meanwhile, 200 people are hospitalized. An increase of 18 with 77 in the ICU and 44 on ventilators. Healthcare workers with COVID-19 no longer need to isolate for a total of 10 days. 
The U.S. Centers for Disease Control now says workers with COVID who are asymptomatic can return to work after seven days with a negative COVID test. The CDC says workers who are fully vaccinated, including a booster, do not need to quarantine after high-risk exposures. That isolation time can be cut even further if there are staffing shortages. And that's today's 9 and 9. All right, well, speaking of COVID, the United States just announcing that we are lifting the travel ban on eight South African countries, and that is going to start on New Year's Eve. Now, remember, that ban was put in effect to those eight South African countries after the appearance of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. So, New Year's Eve, that travel ban is loft, loft, loft. It is lifted. So, there you go. Back here at home, let's Good take news. a live look out of the Alamo City. Beautiful. I'm telling you, it looks foggy right now, but I want to say it's beautiful because it's the theme of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas Eve. We got to get in the mood. You're right. Justin. You're right. <laughs> and you know what? The weather's going to clear up. We'll see some blue skies later today. Fog builds back in tonight for Santa, but that's OK. He's got Rudolph to help him out. We're tracking Santa, by the way. We're going to have the latest on that coming up here in just a bit. But we got to talk about some of this fog. It's back this morning. Places like Bernie Stage, New Braunfels, dealing with dealing with a little bit, although most of Bear County actually looks pretty good right now, uh, fog wise. We just got the, the low clouds and they'll go away. We'll get some uh, clear skies this afternoon. There's a look at some of the trans guide pictures. We've been looking to see if the fog's thicker in other spots. Doesn't look that way. Most everything looks pretty good. Smooth sailing this morning. So all is well. Temperature wise, 62 degrees at the airport, 61 Port SA, 60 in Rio Medina, 58 Las Maples. You can kind of see where those clouds are, those low clouds building in here around Bear County. So like yesterday, we'll give it to about lunchtime and then uh, during the afternoon as uh, temperatures will ramp up. Pollen count just came in and it's not good news. Uh, Mountain Cedar very high, 12,320 Mulder at 170, so it did jump up a little bit. Looking at the forecast, we're at 78 later today, mostly sunny, southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour, and it will be mild tonight. We'll go even warmer for Christmas Day. We've got that forecast, and again, we're tracking Santa. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, taking a live look out at the roadways. Steve Cavazos was in with us this morning telling us it was jolly out on the roadways. Not too much going on. There was a couple stalled vehicles to start the morning. But it is smooth sailing. If you do need to visit family and friends for any Christmas plans, I would head out there right now. And as people do last minute holiday errands, we want to remind you of the places and services that will be closed here in San Antonio. That's right. So take a look here. What some of the closures look like today and tomorrow. 311 will be closed on Christmas with the exception of emergency concerns related to animals and traffic malfunctions. Alamo Dome vaccination sites closed today. Central Library and all branch libraries closed today. And tomorrow, City of San Antonio Community Centers, Adult and Senior Centers closed today through the 27th. Recycling and garbage will not be collected tomorrow. And there are a ton more places closing for the holiday, as well as many places that plan to stay open. If you'd like to read the full list, you can just head over to our website at KSAT.com and type holidays in the search bar. All right, time for morning headlines. The latest on that Exxon mobile explosion. Japan putting a limit on French fries and a TSA agent hailed as a hero. Plus, NASA is launching a new telescope and a police officer gets drenched. All right, so first up, ExxonMobil saying four workers injured, but they are in stable condition. All of this after that explosion at its Houston area plant. People who live near ExxonMobil's Baytown refinery say that they actually felt the explosion before seeing big flames lighting up the sky around yesterday morning. ExxonMobil says that the first Fire took about seven hours before it was extinguished. Four contractors working at the refinery were injured. Two of them have now been released from the hospital. As for the cause of this fire, it's still under investigation. We're told that the unit burned, the unit that burned made gasoline. And we've had a lot of problems with flaring and booming, but nothing like that explosion. ExxonMobil releasing a statement saying they understand that Public respect and confidence are earned through performance, open communications and community involvement. So far, no signs of any air quality issues. All right, so this Christmas Eve, don't take those McDonald's value sized right behind us for granted. 
Yeah, from today through December 30th, McDonald's customers in Japan, and let me emphasize, in Japan only, you can only order a small fry. Medium and large sizes aren't available. Company officials say its potato supply is super low because of flooding in Canada and global supply chain issues. McDonald's Japan also says it's looking into alternatives like airmail to get their french fries back in full supply at their stores. A newly hired TSA officer with 10 years of EMT experience saves the life of a choking infant at Newark Liberty International Airport. That's right, a crazy situation unfolding just behind us. TSA officer Cecilia Morales said that she heard people screaming for help. She knew she had to act quickly. So as a mom lifted her two-month-old son from his car seat carrier, taking him through security, she realized her baby wasn't breathing. So those traveling with her, they couldn't help. They screamed for help. And that's when Morales stepped in. She's a trained EMT. She shouted instructions over to the mother. She jumped over the checkpoint conveyor belt, getting to the baby. I turned around and saw that a mother and the passengers that she was traveling with were in distress because the baby wasn't breathing. Now, here's a small play by play of how that happened. She held the infant carefully to keep his airway open. Then she placed him face down on her arm and patted him on the back. Get this, no response. She tried it again, and the second time, he started to breathe again. Wow, so she saved his life. Right, beautiful story right there. Amazing. All right, so tomorrow, Christmas Day, NASA launching into space its biggest, most expensive, and most powerful telescope yet. The James Webb Space Telescope will rocket into the cosmos and orbit nearly 1 million miles around or away from the Earth. If the launch is successful, the telescope will spend 5 to 10 years studying the formation of the universe's earliest galaxies, how they compare to today's galaxies, how our solar system developed, and if there is life on other planets. Okay. And finally, check this out. All right, so this Reno police officer standing in the side of the road, she was recording a video encouraging drivers to be safe on the roads when that happened, splashed with water. So let's see if we get the video full frame. Not only was she in good spirit, but she continued on with the video. It was actually one of her fellow officers. Oh my gosh. That is fantastic. <laughs> and you know, I'm sure that you've had some live shots People driving by, maybe not to that extent, oh, yeah, no. but you just keep on going. <laughs> you keep going, the show must go on, and it, obviously she looks like she's in a great mood about it, so. Is that no. snow coming down? I don't, I don't think I would have been that good of mood if someone uh, I don't think that's snow. got me with water. Yeah, I don't know. Good for her. Yeah, good Love for her. Love <laughs> it. All right, time now, 9, 10, 61 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, answering questions that has been asked for generations. We're finding out how old old St. Nick is. Oh, look at that. And Justin Horn has been tracking Santa throughout the morning, so we have details on how the NORAD Santa tracking first started, as well as a look at where he is now. And we're getting a live look of Bethlehem, Palestinian town south of Jerusalem in the West Bank, the biblical birthplace of Jesus. It's a major Christian pilgrimage destination. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Republic of Texas Window Company. Hi, I'm Hunter with the Republic of Texas Window Company. My wife Dana and I would like to thank the veterans, first responders and military for their services holiday season. Happy Holidays. Welcome back. And I threw out today and for sure all night, children will be asking the same question. When is Santa coming? <laughs> well, that question will be followed up by the usual answer, which is when you go to sleep. So from generation to generation, it is a question no doubt most adults asked when they were kids. The big guy in the red suit, he hasn't missed a beat over the past century. So how old is Santa Claus? Now, what is your favorite thing about Christmas? I like that question. My favorite thing about Christmas is the love, the hope, and the joy that everybody seems to share that this time of year. Everybody seems to be happier, you know, and it's just there's all the music that's in the air, the special songs. It seems like everybody knows the words to and they sing along. It just seems everybody is so much happier around Christmas time than other times of the year. What is your favorite food? You know, I've really started to like tacos. 
Now, student led, kid certified learning. Yay! All right, well, Santa is not wasting any time making sure little girls and boys across the world have their Christmas gifts delivered. And you can count on NORAD keeping track of Santa's progress around the globe. The agency has been tracking Santa since the mid-1950s, and we all can thank a little boy who dialed a wrong number. Now, the story goes that the little boy picked up the phone, dialed a number, and ended up calling the Air Force's Continental Air Defense <laughs> Command, which was NORAD's predecessor. Now, the little boy asked to talk to Santa, the person on the other end of the phone told the child that Santa couldn't talk, but that the air, t air defense team was tracking Santa in the sky. And since then, Santa's Christmas route has been on the radar. Super cool backstory right there. Amazing backstory. <laughs> Imagine being on the air defense squad and hearing that phone call from a little boy being like, where's Santa? And mm. you just... You're scrambling in that moment to be like, how do I answer this question? Oh, yes. I think it would it would tug on my heartstrings. Oh, yeah. Especially, you know, in the military, that those kind of stories are just beautiful. So super adorable. I adorable. Adorable start. Great tradition. So speaking of traditions, what is your favorite Christmas tradition? My favorite Christmas tradition actually happened like a long time ago. But me and my sister, the night before Christmas, we would always cook, spend the whole day cooking with our family. And then that night we would uh, get in our pajamas and open gifts from our other family members as a teaser oh. for the presents that we would open on Christmas Day. Like so that, that was my favorite good memory back there. What about you? That is fantastic. So this year, starting a new tradition, my girlfriend and I, we don't have to, there's no GMSA tomorrow morning. So I get to sleep in a little bit. So we're going to be driving around San Antonio looking at all the beautiful Christmas lights. Well, that's romantic. Yeah, a little bit. So Justin <laughs> Horn, what about you? Favorite uh, Christmas tradition? You know, I like, uh, we always get out board games, like the, the, the night before Christmas, play as a family. I love that. I yeah. love I love playing games. Nice. What's Good your go-to game? Uh, you know what? It's funny. We played, uh, we played Clue last night. Clue's a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of good ones. A lot of good ones. A lot of fun. And we're tracking Santa uh, this morning. Here is the latest. He is in Indonesia. At least that's where he was last seen. He's on his way to Australia here in about two minutes. He's already delivered over 1.3 billion presents. That's a huge number. So he continues to make his way across the world. We've got some time before he makes it here to the United States and eventually San Antonio a little bit later tonight, but he is moving fast and uh, he'll continue to work in our direction. So that's the latest on where Santa is right now uh, via NORAD, which you just heard about there. Uh, temperatures yesterday across the country were really warm. This is the departure from average. So this is how warm these uh, temperatures were compared to the average temperature in really a large portion of the country was well above average, but Texas really was with uh, temperatures averaging about 10 to 15 degrees uh, above the average. Uh, and it's going to be no different today. We're going to still see some pretty warm temperatures. There are some high wind and red flag warnings up across the Texas Panhandle. I pass that along because the way the situation is setting up there, there could be some fire concerns, uh, which is not good news. Some gusty winds up there, very dry conditions, and also warm uh, for December. Our situation here in town as we look towards the airport, some low-hanging clouds, but not too bad in the uh, fog department. 62 degrees at the airport, 62 Stinson, 61 Kelly, 61 right now in Randolph, and we've got light winds here across the board. As we look at visibility, it is down in places like Bernie Stage, down about three quarters of a mile there. New Braunfels down about two miles. Seeing some improvement, though, across much of San Antonio. The fog was not as bad this morning as it was yesterday, but we still do have some of those morning clouds, and they'll stick around for a while longer. You can see them here clearly on the uh, satellite picture right there along the escarpment and across the hill country down I-35. Seeing some breaks here and there, and... Uh, like yesterday, it'll probably take till about uh, 12 o'clock, 1 p.m., and then these clouds break up. We get the sun and temperatures jump into the 70s. It is sunny, though, in Kennedy. 64 there, 61 Gonzales, 68 in Victoria. Underneath the clouds, 62 here in town, 61 in Kerrville. Dew points are awful high uh, by December standards. We're uh, looking at dew points in the 60s. That puts us in the muggy territory, and it stays that way. The, the, the uh, humidity really doesn't back down much, even as we get into next week. Area of low pressure creating a lot of rain and unsettled weather out west. This ridge of high pressure over Mexico is what is influencing our weather, though, and it will keep things very quiet next couple days and warm, too. We'll get some of these high temperatures today in the mid 80s. 
We're going with 78 here in San Antonio. And then tonight as Santa arrives, temperatures will be right around 60 degrees. And then tomorrow morning, we're back in the or tomorrow afternoon, I should say we're in the 80s, even some 90s on the map. So we're going to be close to some records. I don't think we set any records here in town, but there's going to be some spots around Texas that certainly will set some records as one of the warmest Christmases uh, on record. 81 tomorrow, 82 Sunday, 79 Monday. We will be dealing with morning clouds, I think, going into next week, too. And for December, this is uh, remarkably steady. Usually you get a lot of variations in the temperatures. You get some fronts. We'll be back and forth, up and down. That is not the case in this seven day forecast. It is consistent <laughs> right around 80 degrees each and every day. Morning lows right around 60 guys. All right, Justin Horn. Thank you so much. Time now 921 62 degrees now. Still ahead on GMSA at nine. A perfectly preserved baby dinosaur is discovered. What researchers now know about the 70 million year old fossil. It was a moment 134 years in the making. A time capsule buried underneath a statue of Robert E. Lee in Richmond, Virginia. According to the Virginia Department of Historic Resources, a newspaper article from 1887 claimed the capsule was supposed to have dozens of pieces of Civil War memorabilia and a picture of Abraham Lincoln in his coffin. But when the state's governor, Ralph Northam, did the honors of opening the old box, it wasn't quite what everyone was expecting. Instead, they recovered some old books, an English penny, and even a photo of the stonemason who built the statue. But some historians are still holding out hope the real items they're looking for are still out there. Another historic discovery half a world away. A perfectly preserved baby dinosaur was unearthed still curled up in its egg. The fossil found in 2000, but overlooked for two decades, is thought to be 70 million years old. Wow. Researchers at the Yinglang Stone Natural History Museum in China have named it Baby Yinglang and says that the creature's skeleton was about 11 inches long. In life, it could have reached about six to nine feet in length. Stressed about traveling for the holidays this week? The Reno Airport in Nevada wants to help take a little bit of that stress away with the help of these festive four-legged friends. These certified therapy dogs from Paws for Passengers teamed up with the airport to help spread a little holiday cheer and bring smiles to those navigating the crowd terminals. Now that's something to bark about. Ha, I did it again. For take a all right, it's always funny because we've done stories on the canine units at San Antonio International and it's do not pet me. So when you see the dogs walking around with pet me. Yes, everybody will take advantage of that. Love it. Put a <laughs> smile on your face. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> All right, time now. 926, 62 degrees out. Coming up next, keeping the blues away during this holiday season. We're sharing some tips on how to get and maintain good mental health. Also straight ahead, GMSA at 9, a Wheel of Fortune contestant is driving away with a brand new luxury SUV despite losing. We'll explain how. That was good. Mm -hmm. You could you could host the Wheel of Fortune. Hey, I like the boys. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, here we go. And the Lakers hosting the Spurs. I wish I'm sure they wish they hadn't because I'll tell you what, the Spurs killing it on the road trip. We're gonna have highlights next. Good morning, welcome back and go Spurs go. After two days rest in Los Angeles, the Spurs ending their four game road trip with a win taking on LeBron James and the Lakers. They're on a three game losing streak. Remember, they don't have Anthony Davis for the next month. He has a knee injury. Let's roll the highlights. Doug McDermott, he had a couple threes and then Jakob Poto showing off his mid range game. Justin Horn, a little jealous of that. Knocked down a 14 footer. DeJounte Murray, hopeful all-star. He attacked the paint layup. Spurs were up 12 to nine at that point. Lonnie Walker, he has been phenomenal this season, had a great assist. I hope we're able to show it. Check out the defense. I mean, just all everywhere. And then, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, Keldon Johnson, just scoop and score. Oh, we love to see it. San Antonio had a two-point edge. Let's see where they finished off. It was a heck of an outing on the road for the Spurs. Like I said, four-game road trip. And I'll say it worked out well for them. They crush it 138 to 110 and I got to add this was really the goodbye to the Staples Center and remember you want to throw it all the way back to 1999 when they said goodbye to the forum Tim Duncan left with a show so it was only in true Spurs fashion that they ended the entire regime for the Sp Staples Center with a huge win all right from the court to the field 
We're going to take you behind the scenes at the Alamo Dome. The crew started working on the painting for the field. Remember, 2021 Valero Alamo Bowl. That is Wednesday. The Sooners, they're going to be making their first ever appearance here in the Alamo City. The first major sporting event in San Antonio. The Ducks, Oregon Ducks, because it is Oklahoma, Oregon. Ducks making their third appearance. The game taking place Wednesday at the Dome. Both teams led by interim head coaches. The Sooners. They have Bob Stoops returning to the helm to step in after Lincoln Riley bolted the UNC and after the Sooners convince Brent Venables to leave Clemson where he was defensive coordinator to become OU's new head coach. The Sooners arriving in San Antonio on Christmas Eve today and the Ducks set to arrive tomorrow on Christmas Day. The Ducks coached by Brian McKeldin, their passing game coordinator while waiting on Dan Lanning to take over the program. All right, speaking of football, less than 24 hours after setting a record for quarterbacks, former Smithson Valley star Levi Williams deciding to enter the transfer portal. This comes after Williams led Wyoming to a 52-38 to victory over Kent State, the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. He became the first quarterback to rush for 200 yards, four touchdowns, and another passing touchdown in a bowl game. Williams taking to social media writing, I would like to say my time here at Wyoming has been one I am truly grateful for. I want to thank Coach Bull for giving me the opportunity to play in brown and gold. I am blessed with great teammates and I appreciate all the time I got to spend with them. Now the question is, where will the six foot five quarterback wind up after graduating from Smithson Valley back in 2018? Pro football coverage, powered by All right, here we go. Taking it to the pros with just three games left in the regular season. Here we go. The Cowboys officially clinching a playoff spot last night, but don't worry, we still got football to play. Sunday night football, quarterback Dak Prescott and the Cowboys taking on Washington football team. And here's the thing, the defense and offense, they have a wager going on. It's touchdowns versus takeaways. So after the 21-6 win against the New York Giants, the defense led that competition 4-2. That's after the Dallas D scored three interceptions and had a forced fumble to the Cowboys, one rushing touchdown and one Dak passing touchdown. We don't know what the offense or defense will get if they win the wager. There's been talk of paying for a trip, another incentive to just finish out the season and run through the playoffs after they clinched last night. Just a challenge between fellow teammates. Uh, you know, a little competition won't hurt, so uh, figured it was, you know, give it a good try to see if, you know, offense can uh, beat us on, on turnovers versus touchdowns. And, uh, you know, uh, defense won this one, you know, see what they got this week. All right, here we go. Amari Cooper coming out admitting that he's bothered by the fact he's not getting the ball. So during an appearance on a Dallas radio station, Coop said, I got to be honest, it actually does bother me when asked about the lack of targets going his way. I feel he said he feels like he could be a huge part of fixing the offense, and that's what's frustrating. Adding that the Cowboys offense is not converting the Cowboys defense takeaways into touchdowns. But I got to give a huge shout out my guy Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs, both pro bowlers. So there you go. You know who we have pro bowlers here? We got Jeffany Gray and we got Pro Bowler Justin Horn. Ooh, that's a nice intro. I appreciate that, Max. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, uh, I want to show you a very good picture here in our KSAC Connect. And Jeffany, I think you'll appreciate this. Well, look at uh, look at the Viper, the pug. He's got his nice little sweater on. Does Bo have a sweater like that, Jeffany? Oh my goodness! <laughs> look at the bicep. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Dolores sent that in. Thank you so much. We love the KSAC Connect pictures. We got a couple more coming up. Hey, here are the temperatures across the state right now: 67 in Waco, 64 in Dallas, 71 in Houston, 58 in Midland. It's mild across most of the state. We're going to see a warm start, and we're going to see a pretty warm afternoon. Temperatures are going to be nearing records in some spots. Not here, but I think some spots across Texas will get there. Take a look at the time lapse. We started 345 this morning. You see the fog roll in, and uh, it gets pretty thick there for a while. Now, keep in mind, this camera's up high, so it looks a little bit worse. But we've got some moisture there on the camera. 62 at the airport very quickly. Pollen count. Mountain Cedar very high, 12,320. And your forecast for today... We'll be up around 78. Once those clouds clear out, we'll see some sun this afternoon and a warm Christmas day on the way, too. Guys. Thank you, Justin. The holidays are meant to be a festive time, but this season can take a mental toll on some. And as the pandemic continues, stress of dealing with the sick or the loss of loved ones from COVID can give rise to feelings of hopelessness and isolation. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more ways on how you can take care of your mind this holiday season. 
The holidays are supposed to be a joyous time of the year, but for many Americans, and especially during this second straight year of suffering due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this holiday season has become one of the most stressful. We're feeling this anxiety because we've lost a sense of predictability. We've lost a sense of control. Add in more than 800,000 lives lost, an especially contagious COVID-19 variant, high inflation along with the holiday travel and stress, and that's a recipe for mental and emotional distress. Dr. Pizamati, mental health professional and professor, says she's seeing it up close. I am receiving more requests for mental health help than I've ever before in my 10 years of teaching. But mental health experts say there are ways Americans can stay resilient during this holiday season. It might be important to embrace a holiday that's not traditional or not at home or not busy or not with everybody you know that you're normally with not with that stressful family member and if you do find yourself stressed there's something very powerful that happens when we name our emotions when we acknowledge what we're experiencing it it unlocks a part of the brain that starts to go into healthy problem solving it's also important to set boundaries boundaries help nurture our physical and our mental health. Boundaries help relationships thrive because they create an environment that is safe for every party involved. And finally, if you're grieving the loss of a loved one, give yourself grace. It's important to allow yourself to grieve. You don't want to suppress it. You want to experience whatever feelings that come up in a way that is authentic to you because that's all a part of the healing. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, time now, 938, 62 degrees out. The origins of Will Taylor's spies are revealed in The King's Men. We'll have a preview of the film now in theaters next. must do something. I know you want to fight. But there are other ways of doing your duty. You're going to need a suit. The origins of the well-tailored spies are revealed in The King's Man. We are the first independent intelligence agency. Preserving peace and protecting life. Welcome to the club. Set in the opening years of the First World War, an entirely new cast steps into the Savile Row shoes of the Kingsman. She sort of runs everything. She is the, um, she is, not only does she kind of run the household, but she also kind of keeps everyone in check. <laughs> she is the kind of, you know, the, the glue really, emotional glue, um, but also, you know, she just keeps the, everything ticking along. Shola is an ex um warrior um, who befriended the Duke of Oxford in Africa. So he becomes uh, instrumental in the formation of this uh, independent uh, uh, secret agency. So I play Conrad, he's the Marquis of Oxford, the, the son of um, Rafe, Rafe Fine's character, the, the Duke of Oxford. He's, he's, you know, he's like this young sort of um, uh, Idealist trying to um, join the military at a time where, you know, literally every one was. Rasputin himself, regardless of this movie, is a, is a figure that, that, that is larger than life and, and, and kind of looms over the Russian psyche then and now, you know, um, a character shrouded in mystery and rumour and gossip and myth. <laughs> In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. In your consumer news, online giant Amazon has reached a settlement with the National Labor Relations Board, making it easier for workers to unionize. Under the agreement, Amazon will notify past and current warehouse employees of their rights to organize in its buildings without fear of retaliation. Experts say the decision will likely pave the way for unionizing at other large companies. All right, a Wheel of Fortune contestant getting a new car despite failing to win because of a technicality. It's a story you probably heard already, but Audi says it's giving Charlene Rubush a Q3, this beautiful SUV that you see on your screen. It's a luxury SUV with a starting price at around $35,000. Mm. Now, she almost got one as a prize on the show, but she paused too long while answering a puzzle. Criticism of the loss poured in on Twitter. A spokesperson for Audi says, technicality or not, they're gonna give some holiday cheer. 
Super lucky right there. Oh, yeah. And the Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life, turns 75 this year. It first debuted back in 1946, but get this, it was actually a flop in the box office. It stars James Stewart as George Bailey, who has so many problems. He's thinking about ending it all as George is about to jump from a bridge. He ends up rescuing his guardian angel, Clarence, who then shows George what his town would have looked like if it hadn't been for all of his good deeds over the years. It wasn't until years later later that it gained popularity. Now it's said to be the greatest holiday movie and in the top 20 greatest of all time. Wow. All right, so there's a good chance the game in your life has been playing the new Halo the past few weeks. That's right. Rick Damagella talked with one of the game's composers about creating the game's music. The iconic music of the Halo video games is back alongside Master Chief in the latest entry in the series. Gareth Coker is among the composers who crafted the music for Halo Infinite. With Halo Infinite, uh, I shared the duties with two other composers. Um, I contributed about 100 minutes to the soundtrack. When starting the project, the first thing to do was to go to what I like to call the Halo Music School. Um, and what I mean by that is just going back and studying the scores from the past by Marty O'Donnell and Michael Salvatore, um, all of the other composers have been involved in it, and just try to understand what Halo is all about. And it's not just, stu it's not just studying the soundtracks, it's also playing the games and seeing how the soundtracks work in the game. first two to three months everything i wrote was it was good music but it wasn't halo and there was a like a flipping point where i just like the language of halo's music just suddenly started clicking and then pieces started to get approved very quickly but yeah daunting it would be an understatement because if halo comes out it's usually gonna be the biggest game of the year the soundtrack album for Halo Infinite is out now digitally from Skill Tree Records. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, so going back to the It's a Wonderful Life mm -hmm. story, uh, a data company, Top Data, came out with an infographic that showed the most popular Christmas movies in each respective state. In Texas, it is a Grinch Stole Christmas. So, really? We were just talking, what is your go-to Christmas movie? Hands down, 100% A Christmas Story okay. with Ralphie and yes. his family. I love that movie. And they play it on repeat, so I watch it almost every time. It is a classic. Justin Horn, what about you? I like a lot of them, but my childhood, I would have to say Home Alone. Oh, yes. I forgot about Home Alone. Yes, well. It evokes it, good memories. It yes, is. A, a that's one. a great movie. It was. <laughs> love Christmas time. Yeah. And we, we love tracking Santa, guys. Uh, we've got the latest now. Last seen. In Singapore, oh. he's delivered over 1.6 billion presents at this point and counting. And he's on his way to Malaysia. He'll be there actually right now. He just arrived as we speak. So there you go. Uh, we're tracking him through the day. He'll be in San Antonio, obviously later tonight, and he'll be greeted with some warm weather. Uh, let's talk about the naughty or nice forecast. The nice part of the forecast, we've got some afternoon sun headed our way. Good travel weather, that's for sure. Not so nice, yeah, it's going to be a little warm. 15 degrees above average, and we will deal with more of that uh, fog and drizzle. We've seen a little bit of that this morning, although the fog's starting to go away, and it will be muggy too. So for rating this, and this is subjective, it's a little on the naughty side, but we'll be okay. We'll be okay. It's still going to be a nice afternoon once those blue skies come out. December in general has just been warm. 8.6 degrees above average. We've gotten as warm as 83 degrees. That was back on December 10th. And we're going to be in the 80s potentially next couple days. So I think we finished the year above average. This is probably going to go down as one of the warmest Decembers we've seen here in San Antonio. Seen outside right now is a little foggy, a little cloudy, 62. Some drizzle coming down at the airport. South southwesterly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Notice the dew point is at 60, so that's high. 64 Canyon Lake, 58 New Braunfels, 63 Comfort, 62 in Hondo, 61 in Divine, 63 Catua, 66 out in Del Rio. Plenty warm there. Uh, looking at the dew point tracker, 
We stay right there in the 60s, maybe dropping off a little bit Thursday, but this is really impressive to see this stretch of humid, warm weather sticking with us. Usually we get a front to push through here and it would change everything. Just not happening. It's not in the forecast. So even going into next week, it's going to stay warm and muggy. Satellite picture shows us where our clouds uh, are uh, sitting right now, up and down I-35, stretching into the hill country. Like yesterday, you'll see this kind of shrink and by the afternoon, sun's back out and those temperatures will be going upwards. Uh, that low cloudiness, by the way, stretches all the way into northeast Texas and then uh, back down towards the Del Rio area. The rest of Texas seeing mostly clear skies. All the active weather is still out west, a lot of rain and snow. That's going to cause some travel issues next couple of days. So if you're heading west, that's where all the problems are. But for us, it's still high pressure that is taking control of our weather. We'll be around 78 degrees this afternoon. When Santa arrives, temperatures will be in the 60s, so a little warm. There could be some fog redeveloping tomorrow morning. And then we're back up to 81 on Christmas Day, some 90s on the map. Just incredible. A lot of heat here in Texas. The extended forecast, 81 tomorrow, 82 Sunday. Next week, we'll still get some morning clouds each and every day. Temperatures are right around 80 degrees. And overnight lows will be there in the 60s, guys. Justin Horn, thank you so much. Time now, 9.51, 63 degrees out. After the break, we're taking a look at what people Googled the most during 2021. Welcome back to the countdown to Christmas, inching closer and closer. So if you haven't picked up those tamales yet, time is running out. Our John of the Koto was nice enough to bring us some this morning. Not to worry, our web team has put together a list of places who might be able to help with those last minute orders. Just check out the article right now. Head to KSAT.com. I didn't even know that was a thing. Man, what? they were so good this morning. So yeah. good. He brought a whole bucket. He did. You know, I, was, I was all about it. Uh, 78 <laughs> degrees today. It'll be warm tonight. Uh, warm tomorrow morning, 81 on your Christmas day, 82 Sunday. Uh, we'll lose these clouds eventually and we'll get some sun uh, later today, guys. All right, so 2021 is not over yet, but it is winding down. Mm -hmm. Holiday season is in fact so. We wanted to look at the most Googled stories of 2021. Mm -hmm. Start us off. So we're going to start off with obviously all of our young kids out there, and mm -hmm. I shouldn't be saying this, but we all watch Squid Game. And Squid <laughs> Game, uh, if you don't know about it, it's pretty gory. Um, I've, ran, I've had like four-year-olds, not four-year-olds, but five-year-olds or so say that, oh, yeah, I've seen Squid Game. Oh if goodness. you don't know what Squid Game is, it's basically a highlight of obviously poverty, but it shows the extent that people will go to, you know, get back on top of life. And yeah. therefore, even if that means, unfortunately, killing each other. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we were talking about TikTok in the break. I'm not on TikTok. Jaffney, you're not on TikTok? No. Justin Horn's on TikTok. I am. But I we should have made a TikTok today. I need to get better I'm at it. I'm not a cool kid like Fun you guys. Fun fact, though, TikTok <laughs> was the most visited website in 2021 so far. Still time I to change it. that. But TikTok pasta was one of the most Googled recipes of 2021. Mm -hmm. Very popular. All right. So yeah. before we end today's newscast, our GMSA crew, everyone who woke up dark and early with us, Wanted to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas, baby. Okay, this photo <laughs> was taken this morning. Of course, like I said, much love to all of you guys. Merry Christmas Eve. Enjoy.